I am super excited that we're able to work with them and hopefully we'll have some babies soon. Ooh, these things are gorgeous. Hey, good morning everybody. Welcome to the vlog. I hope the start of your day is absolutely incredible. I'm just taking a little tranquil time out here. It's a little chilly, but it's still absolutely beautiful. Today, I am gonna take you over to the shop and I am just gonna show you a bunch of animals. But for a few minutes, I'm gonna hang out here and just kind of enjoy this. And then we're gonna head over to the shop. And today I am just gonna show you as many snakes as I possibly can for the rest of this vlog. You know, sometimes the vlog is about my daily life, whatever happens to be happening. Well, today there's not a whole lot going on, so I just figured let's just look at a bunch of snakes. I hope that you guys will have a good time with it. Get ready for those comments because I'm gonna wanna make sure to know which animals you think are the most insane and let me know which ones you want me to do maybe a little bit more in depth on in the future. Regardless, let's go ahead and just push our problems aside and have a great time for the rest rest of this vlog. Can you do me a favor? Go down in those comments and tell me something awesome about yourself. While well, you're down there, smash that like button and turn those post notifications on so you know when I upload a video. What do you say we just jump right into this? Well, the idea today is basically just to show you as many animals as I can, tell you a little bit about each one, but not go too in depth. This one right here happens to be an apricot Pueblin milk snake. I mean, look at how gorgeous that animal is. Now, they really come in two phases. The apricot phase that has that kind of orange bands, and then just the normal face that has kind of a yellow to white band. And when you breed the two together, you can get a mixture of both. Now, ironically enough, when you breed two apricots together, typically you can occasionally get a normal face with the yellow or white bands, but when you breed two of the yellow and white bands, it's very rare to get the apricot form. This one right here is what they would call a mosaic California king snake. Now, there's a lot of different morphs of California king snake. This one happens to be a polygenic pattern mutation, where instead of bands or really high whites, they basically have a connect dorsal pattern that a lot of times have dots and dashes in them and kind of have that mosaic pattern on the sides, hence the name Mosaic Cow. Tell you what, colubrids are so squirmy and wiggly, but this happens to be a gorgeous lavender snow California king snake. And the lavender snows came from the chocolate cow kings, which are basically the melanistic bred to a lavender and then ultimately bringing them back. And one out of 16 odds hits the lavender snow cow. That thing is gorgeous. This one right here is an albino albino California king snake. This is what they would call the coastal phase, which is basically normally gonna be brown and yellow, but when you put it into albino, you get these beautiful kind of pink and almost a little bit of lavender bands that makes them so incredible. This is one of the early mutations of California king snakes. This is another mosaic California king snake, but look at the dots and dashes on this one's back. It's just so cool that I figured I'd wanna show you guys. Then to continue to show you guys the amazing polymorphism within mosaic Cal Kings. You can see this one has an unbelievable wide dorsal stripe on it. These things are so cool and that just gives you an example what you can do through polygenics. When you're breeding certain traits, you can get some really cool mutations. Ooh, <laughs> doggy! And here is another polygenic California king snake. But this, of course, is a high white desert California king snake. And basically what that is, is that for many, many generations, we just continued to breed the highest white animals to the highest white animals. We've been working on this project for close to 20 years, and you can see we're getting animals that are almost solid white now, just with a little black freckling on them. The truth is, is these guys in the wild are typically about 60 to 70% black. So you can see it takes a lot of generations, but the results are incredible. Take a look at this granite spotted python here. I showed you guys our new spot and children's and Stimson's pythons, and that's what these guys are right here. But this is a recessive mutation that causes it from going like spotting to a graniteed look. And this one is actually almost patternless, which makes it super cool. So we're gonna raise this little bugger up and see if we can produce more just like this. Moving on to this beauty right here. This happens to be a cinder to Sarah corn snake. The cinder is a recessive mutation, which is like a black corn snake, which is very similar to say the other black corn snakes would be either type A or type B aneurysmic. And then the Tessera makes that really crazy kind of stripey pattern with the granulated sides. I absolutely love both these mutations and together they make a beautiful snake. Here's another beauty here. This is what they would call an amber Tessera. So the Tessera is the same as that cinder one I showed you, but the amber is actually a hypomelanistic caramel. 
and the caramel is actually the genes that would make a butter corn in the albino version. So basically the amber is the hypo, butter is the albino, but that is just absolutely incredible. Sticking with the Tesseras, this is a candy cane albino Tessera. Now the candy cane is really a polygenic albino corn snake or amelanistic corn snake. And basically what it is is bred for the highest white. So you have really a lot of contrast between the orange or reddish color and the white color. Now there's other things like the sunscreams that go the other way, which basically have very little contrast at all, almost like an all kind of orangish reddish snake. These ones are absolutely incredible and I love them. And when you put the candy cane and the tessera together, holy cow, it makes for a pretty snake. You know, I love all corn snakes. Well, I love all reptiles and all animals for that matter. But there's certainly some animals that I have just always thought were some of the most incredible. And these hypo lavender corn snakes are one of them. I mean, the first time I ever saw a hypo lavender corn, a guy named Rick Sikowski actually produced them. I was blown away. And that's been probably 12 or 15 years ago. And I still love them to death. Definitely still in the top three or four corn snake morphs that I think are the most incredible. The albino reverse Oka tea corns are really awesome too. Now I've talked about the Oka tea corns before. They're just a classic wild type corn snake that come from an area that have the most beautiful, just rich banding. And the albino reverse Oka teas are basically just the albino version of it. Now it's kind of interesting why they don't just call them albino Oka teas. For whatever reason, when they were first produced probably 20 plus years ago, someone just named them albino reverse Oka teas, meaning they were the opposite of normal. They were albino. And the name just kind of stuck. I mean, you still see albino oka tea from time to time, but most commonly you'll see albino reverse oka tea, and they are absolutely incredible. Certainly another incredibly gorgeous snakes. I mean, there's a handful of snakes that just kind of blow everyone away when they see a Mexican black kings are that way, but gray banded kings are another one. And when people that don't even know anything about snakes see them, they just go, oh my gosh, that thing is incredible. It just doesn't even look like it's real. I mean, that unbelievably steel gray with the orange and sometimes just black coloring. I mean, these things are freaking awesome. I love them to death. We're raising up a group of these guys and I hope to get even more in the future because this is a snake that I used to produce a lot of and not only have a handful so I've got to raise up a bunch more because I have completely fallen back in love with them. I've talked about these guys before. These are actually black milk snakes or a Lampropeltis triangulum gagei. And what it is is when they're born, they're red, black, and yellow, but you can start to see already that that red is starting to turn a little bit more sooty looking. And what happens is that as these guys get bigger, they'll turn jet black. That's right, shiny jet black. So the yellow and the red just kind of get faded away into a glossy black big milk snake. I love these guys and they're getting so big. I cannot wait for another four or five months when these guys are pretty much jet black and that transition phase makes it look so cool too. I'm going to be taking some awesome pictures of these guys once they start to get that black color in. It's going to be so awesome. And speaking of awesome, remember when I hatched this albino Honduran milk snake? It kind of looks like a candy corn from Halloween. I've never hatched one that has that wide yellow bands like this. This guy is unbelievable. When it hatched, it was beautiful. And I'll be honest with you, as it's getting bigger, it still looks just as good. I hope that I'll be able to actually develop a line of albino Hondurans that are just like this. I think it'll be polymorphic, so I should be able to, in the next several years, have an entire line of these wide yellow band albino Honduran milk snakes. one of the cutest little colubrid snakes are little hognose snakes. Of course, these are western hognose snakes and they are just absolutely adorable. We've been working with these guys for a long, long time. The albinos and pinks and azanthics and anacondas and the list goes on and on. And now there's all kinds of other ones. I mean, they are almost as polymorphic as say a corn snake. Not quite that much, but if you want a really cool snake that's super plastic, just kind of cute and adorable, hognose snakes are the way to go for sure. And again, now you can 
get all kinds of different paint jobs. These guys are absolutely stunning and I've always loved them. My gosh, look at how freaking awesome this snake is. This is actually an opal tessera corn. And I've talked to you guys about the tesseras earlier, how they're a pattern mutation, which is co-dominant. Well, the opal is actually an albino lavender. So I showed you the hypo lavender earlier and said how much I like it. Well, when you mix it into an albino, it's something that they call opal. And then of course with that tessera too, holy cow, it's just like this pink animal, which is a little fate pattern. I mean, I love this thing. you guys are enjoying just kind of a snake filled vlog that doesn't have a lot of context other than the fact that I'm just excited about showing you guys a bunch of cool snakes. This happens to be a scaleless Texas rat snake and of course there's scaleless corn snakes and some other scaleless snakes as well. When it comes to the Texas rats they are a recessive mutation and the thing that's so cool about them is how polymorphic they are or how different the colors can be. I mean you can have animals like this that are orange, you can have yellows, reds, different patterning, different amounts of scales. I just think it's amazing because if you hatch a hundred scaleless rat snakes, they're almost all individually different. We're breeding for specific traits and we've got some really beautiful lines, but the fact is even in those lines, there's still a huge range of animals even within that polymorphism. So uh, I just love scaleless snakes. I just think they're so goofy. I think they're interesting and anyone that touches them always is freaked out because they literally feel really soft, almost like a rubber snake to be honest with you. These guys are freaking cool. So earlier I showed you the Amber Tessera, which was the hypo -carm and I said that the albino caramel is a butter. Well, this happens to be a butter tessera, so it is an albino caramel tessera corn. Corn snakes have been around forever when it comes to kind of reptile keeping and breeding, and they were really what kind of founded the way to like the color mutations, really. I mean, they were the first snake that people really bred for color mutations and combinations. And really, in the early days of corn snakes, there was like albino and urethristic, then you bred those together and you produce snow corn snakes. And then there was the striped corn snake, which is another recessive. So the three recessives together, albino, aneuthristic, which is the black corn, and the striped corn produce this, the snow striped corn. So really, even in the early stages of corn snake production, and that goes back almost 30 years, people started to produce triple combinations like the snow stripe, but it was a huge deal back then because there wasn't the complex genetics that there is today with all these things. That's why I can really appreciate things like striped snow corns because there's so much history behind them. I've always just fallen in love with tree boas and tree pythons for that matter. The Amazon tree boas are kind of the cheaper version of the emerald tree boa in a sense, but I think that they're very interesting in the fact that there's so many different colors. And it's not like mutations like a corn snake or something like that where you're breeding for stuff. They are just polymorphic in the sense that you can have 12 or 15 babies in a litter because they have live young and each one can look completely different. They have an unbelievable differing amount of power patterning on them. I mean, they are just such beautiful, incredible animals. So we're raising up a bunch more. We already have a group of adults. And hopefully we'll have some new bloodlines to produce some new, more interesting patterns and colors here in the next couple years. But what great animals. I talked about doom rolls boas in the past and when I got all these babies, I was so excited because I've just always loved doom rolls boas. The first time I produced babies was when I was like 18 years old and there were not a lot of people in the country that had produced them. And it's not that I was some great breeder. I just had a pair. I put them together and they had 13 babies. I'll never forget that morning waking up and looking in the cage and seeing a whole pile of goopy baby Dumeril's bones. They are such beautiful animals. Oh man, I hope that I can raise up a group of them and start breeding these guys again because I absolutely think they're one of the coolest live bearing boas out there. I was so excited when last year we produced our first leucistic rainbow boas. I mean, it was kind of a dream of mine forever. A good friend of mine bought the very first one off of a place called Rare Earth way back in the day for a hundred thousand dollars and he was able to raise them up and actually produce them maybe I don't know 10 or so years ago and ever since I've always wanted them so 
So the fact that I was able to get some and actually reproduce this last year was so exciting. This year coming up, I should definitely have some more beautiful white little babies like this with the blue eyes. And then who knows, a couple years from now, I could have a whole bunch of them because I hung on to a bunch of the females that are white snake producers. So, oh my gosh, this thing is so freaking awesome. There are so many awesome snakes to show you guys downstairs, but I am super excited about these guys here. Of course, these are the Hypo Brazilian Rainbow Boas, and you know that I produce Brazilian Rainbow Boas, which I think are absolutely gorgeous, but the fact that these Hypos are even cleaner and more beautiful, this is the first year that I'm gonna have an opportunity to try to breed them. We have two females and a male, so with any luck, we'll get a couple litters of baby Hypo Brazilians this year. These are my Indian Smooth Scale Sand Boas that I've showed you guys before, and these are basically big adults right here, and this is what they typically look like as they get older. They're born really nice orange with some cool patterning on them, and then as they get older, they typically turn this kind of brown color. I still think they're, they're really neat, but certainly the sunset version, which is this version right here, stays this color, which is really cool. So it's actually like a morph of smooth scales. And rather than losing their pigment like these guys here and turning kind of a dull, kind of brownish color, they keep some of that beautiful orange. You can see some of the faint patterning on them. So it's really cool. We produced these guys last year, so hopefully with any luck, we'll have some more litters this year. And if I'm mentioning Samboas, of course, I'd be remiss if I didn't at least show these rough scale Samboas along with it. I've showed you guys the Kenyans and Javelins and Indian Sands before, but I figured I'm in the air and I figured I'd just go ahead and show you. This is kind of one of my first love of Samboas, to be honest with you. My first Samboas were Kenyan Samboas, but the second Samboas I ever got were these guys, the Konicus. And I don't know, I just really fell in love with them and I've been working with them ever since. They really aren't that common anymore. You don't see them around too often. That's why I think it's awesome that we're continuing to have success each year producing a bunch of babies. Now these guys don't have big litters. My largest litter ever was nine babies. Typically they have five or six babies where, you know, with the Kenyans, they'll have 25 or sometimes even 30 babies. So that's maybe why you don't see these guys around as much. I am so excited that we're breeding the mangroves this year. You know, all of the boegas are just incredible. And I can't wait to get these guys in big naturalistic displays because they are an amazing display snake. But with any luck, we'll get some babies this year too. We raised up some babies from a couple years ago and they are turning out so incredible. But hopefully with any luck, we'll have our own babies produced pretty soon. Now these guys do have a little bit of venom, a rear fang, but nothing too major at all. And look at just how beautiful. The first time I ever saw a mangrove, I was like, I have to have these one day. So I am super excited that we're able to work with them and hopefully we'll have some babies soon. Whew, these things are gorgeous. And with that said, I am gonna go ahead and end the vlog here. Again, I really enjoyed just kind of looking through and picking out snakes that I thought you guys would like to see. I'd like to know in the comments, what snake did you like the most? What would you like to see more of? I just hope that you guys enjoyed this. Tomorrow I might do that snake bites reaction video with Lori, myself, and Noah, where we look at some kind of cringe-worthy old Brian Bartek snake bite stuff and just kind of see what it's like. Again, I have not watched some of these in eight or nine years, so if we do it, it's gonna be absolutely hilarious, and I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm gonna be totally embarrassed, but we may do that tomorrow. I'll let you guys know. In the meantime, have an absolutely incredible day, night, evening, morning, whenever you happen to be watching it. Your support means the world to me, and I love you guys so much. Can you do me a couple favors before we get out of here? Can you smash that like button, as well as turn those post notifications on so you know when I upload a video, which is every day, seven days a week, at nine o'clock in the morning, Eastern Standard Time. Remember to be kind to someone today, and I promise I'm gonna see you guys tomorrow.